Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk about airway management during COVID-19 era. Uh, I'm going through different important uh, tips to help you or guide you during intubating uh, critical ill COVID-19 dish. Of course, it's a very challenging topic. Uh, difficult airway scenario, it's, it's a very tough topic. And COVID-19 also is a very tough topic, but really we are trying to simplify uh, the lecture. Uh, we know that difficult airway is very common in critical ill patients. Uh, we know that 6% of ICU patients, they have real difficult airway. We know clearly that 30% uh, of ICU patients, they have first pass uh, success failure. 25% of ICU intubation is complicated with severe hypoxemia. Uh, with uh, saturation less than 80%, they are having 60-fold uh, increase in the major, uh, uh, ad uh, uh, major adverse events, including death and brain damage from severe hypoxemia. And interestingly, 80% of uh, acute events occur after securing airway. And the main reason for that is that anatomically normal airway becomes physiologically difficult due to rapid deterioration, decreased reserve, and uh, we know that urgency itself is a, is a great problem. Urgency and the fear increase difficult. That's why uh, difficult intubation is, is more common in critical ill patient compared with, with uh, anesthesia theater. COVID-19 also carry a very high risk because the staff are scared, uh, they don't know what to do, uh, uh, they are uh, scared from contracting COVID-19, uh, uh, so this, this scenario will be more difficult. So we have to take care. Taking care here is, uh, takes priority. We are going to review uh, guidelines or, or recommendation. Actually, it's not a guideline from difficult airway societies. We have a DAS, Difficult Air Society Guidelines. Uh, we have a SAS, our uh, Safe Airway Society uh, from uh, US and Australia. We have also uh, a, a new recommendation coming from the chest uh, in uh, April 9, 2020. So we'll go quickly through this recommendation and I'll give you also my personal opinion in between if thing is not covered or weird in the recommendations. The first uh, tip is assign. So we need to assign the most experienced physician, uh, the most experienced physician in the hospital uh, in intubation to uh, manage the airway for those categories of patients. And if you uh, have uh, airway management team, will be great. And the airway management team mostly led by anesthesiologists in many, many hospitals. And uh, we know that the anesthesiologists uh, are more expert and uh, they are free to help during this tough situation. Intensivists are very busy uh, in, uh, in managing uh, the ICU patient inside the unit. Maybe the uh, anesthesiologist will help during this tough situation. So airway management team should be a backup team. When you are busy, full unit, assign the airway management team to manage the airway uh, throughout the hostel, including CPR and uh, emergency uh, intubation in the ward. And important to take care that early intubation here is very, very, very important. Please don't wait until patient deteriorate and you change the elective intubation to high risk intubation. Now, the outcome will be difficult, uh, dangerous, the outcome will be worse, and also uh, the uh, risk of exposure of stuff will be much higher. Everything becomes very uh, uh, worse when you uh, are in an emergency situation. Uh, apply. Apply tip. We need to apply a full PPE, intubate an airborne negative pressure room, uh, wear mask, gloves, footwear, gown, treble gloves, uh, uh, most of them better to be disposable. Consider to use uh, N95 mask, uh, but uh, take care. You should have a fit tested N95 mask. And if you have a paper, will be more superior. 
paper as uh, uh, is, is uh, abbreviation for powered air purifying respiratory. Okay, so uh, if you have a bird, uh, if you have a paper available, better to use paper during intubation. And we need to use also the aerosol intubation box. The intubation in the aerosol intubation box can protect you during the uh, intubation and during the extubation as well. We are going to see a video, a small video clip about the aerosol intubation box. And I think it's very easy to create it in your area. I created it in my area. And uh, it is very helpful during this tough situation. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a shortage of personal protective equipment, PPE, pressing clinicians to perform procedures on infected patients without the recommended protective gear. As we grapple with supply problems, a Taiwanese anesthesiologist recently shared the design of a reusable protective device to reduce droplet and aerosol exposure during airway management. This aerosol box is a plastic transparent cube designed to cover a patient's head with two orifices to insert the hands while performing a procedure. We took an aerosol box prototype to our simulation center to examine its protective qualities. To simulate a cough and evaluate the spread of droplets and aerosols, we used a small latex balloon filled with 10 cc of fluorescent dye placed in a mannequin's hypopharynx. The dye contains small particles invisible to ordinary light and clings to any type of surface. The balloon was inflated with oxygen through tubing inside the mannequin until it exploded, simulating a forceful cough. A laryngoscopist covered with a gown, surgical mask with eye shield, and surgical hat stood at the head of the mannequin with his hands inside the box. We repeated the experiment without and with the box and then illuminated the scene with ultraviolet light to visualize the spread of the dye. The simulated cough expelled the fluorescent dye through the mannequin's mouth. The laryngoscopist who was positioned above the mannequin's head was contaminated on his face mask, eye shield, neck, ears, and arms. There was contamination of the room floor several feet away from the head of the bed and on a monitor located over six feet away from the mannequin. After the experiment without the box, the room was cleaned, the PPE replaced, and the experiment repeated with the box position over the mannequin's head. The simulated cough resulted only in contamination of the inner surface of the box and the laryngoscopist's hands and forearms. Ultraviolet light examination of the laryngoscopist and the room showed no contamination outside of the box. Our Southern Cough model during airway management underscores the infection transmission risk when caring for patients with COVID-19. A single cough can contaminate a significant portion of the PPE, the clinician's neck, ears, hair, the floor and surrounding equipment. Patients can cough during intubation and extubation. It is estimated that with a flow rate of up to 7 to 8 liters per second, a cough can spread a large number of droplets with size varying from 0.1 to 10 micrometers. Our simulation falls within this spectrum and produces many droplets of varying size. Considering the spread of contaminants from a single cough, every measure should be taken to contain droplets and protect healthcare providers, including using a head cover or hood. Although the aerosol box does not eliminate the risk of exposure, it reduces the risk of transmission during airway management. Our simulation method, though pragmatic, is not validated for the projectile direction, speed, or turbulence of a true cough nor to match the particle size distribution. Droplets are overproduced compared to aerosols. Our method of detection cannot identify very small quantities of materials that could be infectious. Nevertheless, we suggest that the ad hoc barrier enclosure provided a modicum of additional protection and could be considered as an adjunct to standard PPE. As a caveat, we found that the box restricted hand movement and required training before using patients. Operators should be ready to abandon use of the box should airway management prove difficult.
So <coughs> be prepared not to be scarce. Probable variation prevents poor performance. Main target of airway management uh, in COVID-19, of course, in general, is adequate oxygenation, adequate ventilation. But if I'm going to choose one here, I'm going to use adequate oxygenation. Because to make adequate ventilation, you need really to generate a lot of aerosol particles and you expose the stuff to hazards. Uh, one of the examples of that is we are not preferring to use bag mask ventilation, which can provide adequate ventilation for the patient. Uh, hemodynamic optimization also is important to improve the outcome before intubation and staff protection takes again the highest priority. Preparation for intubation the respiratory in ICU. system moves air through the nose, pharynx, uh, before going to and bronchus to the alveoli where the gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs. Nares are the openings to the nose. The nasal cavity is lined with cilia mucous membranes, and blood capillaries. The air is filtered by cilia, moistened by mucous membrane by the blood. Air moves into the pharynx or throat, the common passageway for food and air. Air continues on to the larynx. The epiglottis, a flap of tissue in front of the larynx, closes off the larynx when swallowing to prevent food from entering. The larynx or voice box contains the vocal folds. The trachea or windpipe connects the larynx to the bronchial tree. The cartilage rings of the trachea prevent the trachea from collapsing. Lungs are spongy tissue with alveoli and blood capillaries. Breathing occurs because of the expansion and contraction of the lungs. The bronchi carrying the air are smaller branches called bronchioles. At the end of each bronchiole are the alveolar sacs. The alveolar sacs are surrounded by blood capillaries and contain millions of single-layer alveoli cells where the gas exchange takes place. Oxygenated air goes from the nose to the pharynx, larynx, and alveoli. By the process of diffusion, oxygen in the air moves from the alveoli to the capillaries. Carbon dioxide moves from the capillaries to the alveoli and is exhaled. This process is called respiration. To prepare, we need to avoid few issues. Number one, fiber optic awake intubation. So nothing called fiber optic awake intubation in critical care COVID-19. Atomized local anesthesia should, be not, should not be used. Bag mask ventilation and cough should not be allowed. And if you are going to use bag mask, we are using it in a modified way. We learn together how to do that. Circuit disconnection is also an issue here. Please don't disconnect the circuit haphazardly, and this will expose the patient to a high risk of aerosol exposure. So prepare equipment, prepare the patient, prepare team, and prepare for difficulty. And everything has to be prepared outside the patient room, and don't forget to be always safe, accurate, and swift. Equipment. Here, we don't have option. Use video-assisted laryngoscopy. If you have an angulated blade or deep blade, uh, even will be better because uh, this will uh, facilitate difficult intubation uh, view. Use intubating equipment that you're familiar with. It's important. Don't use the first time in your life the aerosol box during intubation. Don't use the first time in your life the video-assisted laryngoscope especially the deep lead uh, uh, with intubating COVID-19 patient. No, practice before going, uh, use it in elective situation, easy intubation, so when you have a difficulty, you're able to deal with. Uh, don't forget to prepare drugs, including pressors, uh, uh, phone and set, like uh, front of neck uh, airway, before going inside the room. Everything should be ready in a pack or in a trolley before going inside patient room. Prepare patient, IV line, interosseous line, proper assessment quickly, optimization of hemodynamics, optimize position. Position is very crucial during intubation. Optimize general state of the patient and the general state of the situation in general. Uh, Pre-oxygenation, peroxygenation, rapid sequence intubation, delay sequence. We will learn about it in the few slides next. 
quick assessment is important. We don't have a luxury to go for full Macoca score, which is the ideal in critical ill patient. Okay, score. We know that score more than three uh, uh, or equal three is difficult, but here we don't have a proper assessment. We have to anticipate that the patient having difficult intubation, so everything will be prepared inside our room. Best view, of course, we would like to see uh, a good view with a big lots. Uh, well, the glots full view, the arytenoid. Uh, of course, this is a kind of bad view with, uh, with edema, laryngeal edema. And this is a very bad view. And this is a terrible view with patients bleeding. It's very difficult to intervene in those kinds of patients. This is a cork pack lehan classification, a called CL classification, where you can see clearly the entire glots and the arytenoid. Uh, uh, this is a class one, class two, uh, or grade two uh, A, which you can see uh, the glots, but uh, not fully. Uh, grade two uh, B, you can see only the arytenoid, the posterior axis of the glots. Uh, grade 3, where you can see only the epic glots, you can't see the glots at all, or the arytenoid, and the grade 4 glots and epic glots are not seen. Uh, you have to understand that uh, grading uh, indicating difficulty. So if you go from grade 2E, uh, 2A to grade 2B, you increase from 4% difficulty to 67% difficulty. So just quick assessment when you go and document, please, after you intubate, the patient has a grade 3, so when people are going to extubate or intubate later on, they are taking care. Good view does not mean intubation is easy. You might see well, but you cannot intubate. I have seen this many times during uh, intubating patient with uh, long incisors. I cannot push the tube in. Okay, uh, Difficult mouth opening. How to push the tube with difficult mouth opening? You can see the view, but you cannot push the tube in. So good view does not mean uh, intubation is easy. Important also to uh, uh, to go for uh, pre-oxygenation, uh, 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 and now the term has been changed to pure oxygenation. So uh, the first thing is late change of position from sitting to lying. Don't allow patient to lie during intubation and until you prepared everything, and the patient receives sedation and brought him to uh, lying down. Uh, oxygenation, abnic oxygenation with high flow nasal cannula is important as well. Uh, but just take care, it's an aerosol producing procedure. So don't use it unless patient really not able to oxygenate well with face high flow oxygen through the face mask. Uh, CBAB, we have a concern about it here uh, because it's a, a carry high risk of aerosol exposure. But if we are going to use it, we have also a precaution but better to be avoided. I, uh, it's important also to understand that uh, the high nasal cannula is very beneficial because it generates air and oxygen uh, uh, together and uh, with uh, uh, heat and humid, hum humidified medical gas. Uh, so uh, it can give a, a flow up to 70 liters per minute and if I do up to 100%. So uh, it is very crucial to use it all through during the intubation but again, it is an aerosol generating procedure. Avoid it if you are not in negative uh, airborne, uh, negative isolation room, uh, or uh, patient can be doing well with usual nasal cannula 15 liters, and also again, use it all through. When you are obliged to use modified bag mask ventilation, please use a small tidal volume, double person technique uh, to have an adequate seal, Connect viral filter, especially to the expiratory limb, uh, is very, very, very important uh, to take care because this is a very high uh, risk of rapid uh, aerosol production. Rapid sequence intubation is the standard of care, but with minimized time between level of uh, uh, decreased level of consciousness with sedation and placement of AT tube, and we need to be fast here. So the RC uh, RSI. It's very crucial during this tough time. And composed of three Bs, as we know, pre-oxygenate for three minutes, whatever you are using, uh, predetermined correct dose of induction and paralyzing drugs, 
And here we are using usually six nine or rock uh, the fast, but don't forget to use a longer muscle, a longer uh, muscle relaxant, longer uh, onset muscle relaxant after you secure the airway. Otherwise, the patient might cough, uh, especially during uh, this connection and connection with the mechanical vent or moving from one area to another area. Uh, cricoid pressure here is crucial to be, to be used by a skilled person. And uh, we know cricoid pressure to apply 20 to 30 Newton uh, force or uh, uh, 2 to 3 kg force. And if don't exceed that because we'll obscure the airway as will distort the larynx. And has to be done by a skilled person. And you have to understand that avoiding neuromuscular blocking agent will increase difficulty. So uh, well known from studies that uh, using uh, uh, neuromuscular blocking agent can improve lung compliance, reduce complication, and reduce number of intubation attempts. And here we are really uh, uh, essential to have that. As I told you, after securing the airway, use long-acting muscle relaxant. Delayed sequence intubation we are usually doing when you have a problem with pre-oxygenation, patient hypoxic before intubation. We are using a, a position, head up 30 degree, oxygenating the patient with uh, uh, whatever you are using, high frontal cannula or, what, or whatever. But important to uh, understand that uh, uh, patient should remain conscious until adequately oxygenated. Here is the high risk procedure. We are not encouraging to use delayed sequence intubation uh, in COVID-19, but sometimes we are obliged to use it. So what to do? The only way to do to improve oxygenation before going to intubate. So do it again in airborne negative pressure room and take all precautions. Papier should be used here. And if you have uh, the intubation uh, aerosol box will be great. If that uh, uh, increase more than 95, continue, continue uh, non rebreathing mask. If the sat less than 95, use bag valve mask with PEEP valve or CBAB uh, uh, and high flow nasal cannula, high flow nasal oxygen. And again, I told you, you have to use all this kind of strategy by uh, great precaution. After satisfactory pre-oxygenation for three minutes, Intubate with muscle relaxant. What about ketamine sequence intubation? When you use the patient is very agitated and uh, uh, very difficult to oxygenate him. So here we give ketamine, uh, no muscle relaxant until patient adequately oxygenated, and then we'll intubate. And this scenario is usually used during uh, 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 not anticipated, confirmed difficult intubation. So you're scared to give muscle relaxant, and you're not able to intubate. You give ketamine. This is very uh, a good scenario. Uh, our intervention to use it in pediatric. Uh, keep patients spontaneously breathing is a central tent of difficult intubation strategy. But again, this is very hazardous when you deal with COVID-19 patients. Okay, quite force. This is uh, an approach. Best positioning for intubation, sniffing position, of course, with head on a single uh, below, the ear benny. Our ear benna and the sternum should lie on the same horizontal plane. The oral, pharyngeal, laryngeal axis should all align together. Uh, obese vision, we need to use blankets and pillow to have a ramping position. And uh, better if you have an Oxford pillow. This is a flex extension, the best position. Flexion of the neck, extension of the occiput. Use a pillow to have a 7 to 10 centimeter. This is a ramping position. This is the Oxford bellow. This is usually having in the OR when they are intubating a patient uh, for uh, bari bariatric surgery. Uh, prepare the team. So preparation of the team is very, very important. So most of the guidelines advise you to use the three members. The first member, which is the team operator, which is the most skilled in intubation. Team assistant, the RT. And RT here can actually look at the uh, vital sign and oxygenation uh, until the nurse will give the medication. I, in my strategy, I'm using four. So uh, the prepare for difficulty. Here you need to plan outside the room. We know that uh, 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 anatomical and physiological and pathological 
criteria for intubation may not be uh, present, uh, but you will have, you are facing environmental difficulty when things will be unfamiliar. Now you are intubating patient in the corridor, in the ward, in the ER, which may be things unfamiliar with you. If, if like you feel the patient is fit to be moved to ICU in a familiar con uh, area with a strict uh, infection control measures, it's fine. If not, intubate in the same area, but please move the patient to negative pressure room. And uh, you have to understand how much time before deciding to move the patient to uh, uh, ICU. So you have a time to do that. You have, should have a plan and to be verbalized. And you have to know what's the difficulty as a view, intubation or, vent or ventilation difficulty. And you have to understand that failed intubation is, uh, is not uncommon in ICU patient, up to 10 to 30 percent, and consequence of hypoxia potentially catastrophic when you deal with the critically ill uh, compared with dealing with a uh, patient inside the OR. So you should have a plan. We need to, call, to perform things in correct sequence, rapid sequence, intubation with video laryngoscope. If fail, you go for fa face mask oxygenation. If fail, you go for modified bag mask ventilation as we learned it. Uh, if fail, we'll go for LMA or ILMA. If fail, we'll declare CQ. And don't forget here the role of surgical airway if CQ has been declared. And all the time, you need to maintain uh, adequate uh, oxygenation and situational awareness. And again, your, your protection is the main priority. So when you are facing difficulty, you usually consider what's called vortex approach, which is composed of three upper airway lifelines, including uh, endotracheal tube, face mask, subaglottic airway. So everybody uh, you're having a best effort to go to that green uh, uh, zone. This is uh, feed the, the picture for... Uh, Laryngeal mask airway. So we need to perform techniques you are familiar with in familiar environment. Everything becomes difficult in unfamiliar environment. And important to understand that repeated intubation attempts might change difficult intubation into impossible intubation. We don't want to go to that area. And the important, again, to maintain situational awareness. Situational awareness has been invented by uh, uh, American after jumbo crash, uh, airplane jumbo crash. And uh, it is not a kind of decision making. It is a kind of accurate anticipation uh, of the current situation to improve decision making. So the definition of situational awareness, accurate understanding of, of current situation and likely change in the near future. If you apply that to uh, difficult airway, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we need to stress on the point that don't be so fixated on completing procedure and fail to announce the patient deterioration. So uh, I, I have seen many, many uh, intensivists kept on, I am going to intubate the patient. First time failure, second time failure, third time failure. We are using the same method and same techniques and there is no proper understanding of the current situation. Here, really, you have to understand what you are going to do. And the patient is going to deteriorate very fast. So ask for help quickly. Uh, use airway adjunct. Use different airway tools. After intubating the patient, don't forget to confirm and secure the AT tube. And here is important to use continuous wave capnography rather than to use uh, entitled CO2 detector. Uh, we are using that also during uh, mechanical ventilation of this, this patient because we are not using uh, 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 frequently uh, blood gas checking. You have oxygenation in front of you and you have <coughs> the CO2 uh, in front of you. Most intubation do things in sequence. This is very important slide. This slide equal one million dollars. Cricoid pressure don't release un unless the cuff of the tube is inflated. After the cuff inflation, clamp the AT tube, apply the high quality viral filter, 
and then connect to the mechanical vent. After connect to the mechanical vent, don't forget to insert nasogastric tube. Please don't go outside the room and go inside. Oh, I forgot nasogastric tube. No, do all things in sequence. Complete your checklist and then go outside the room and go. Don't go inside again until things getting worse or an emergency. So this sequence of uh, intervention has to be done carefully. Both intubation. Don't forget to reach his immediately the laryngoscope. All used equipment should be sealed in double zip locked plastic bag. If you go for the summary of the uh, uh, protocol for uh, uh, difficult airway, you should have a plan A, a plan B, plan C, plan D. Plan A should have a video assisted laryngoscope. Uh, uh, if difficult, if succeed, confirm with capnography. <clears throat> if difficult, don't forget style it bougie, repositioning of the patient, verb approach, remove cricoid force. All this will facilitate to help you in intubating the patient. If first failure, call for expert help. And uh, here, suppose you are the most expert person. So uh, we don't have luxury to do that when you are dealing with COVID-19 patient. Uh, and uh, try to phone a set to be available all the time. If declared failed intubation, you should have a plan B and C here. You have a rescue oxygenation. And you, when you do modified bag mask ventilation, uh, it's important to understand how to do it. And uh, you might use a D-blade here to facilitate uh, intubation and the maximum of three attempts. Uh, uh, if succeed, well and good. Uh, if not succeed, you need to declare uh, CECO. Uh, cannot intubate, cannot uh, oxygenate. And you go for plan D with the front of neck uh, uh, approach and should be done by trained expert, of course. In COVID-19, things is not much different here unless things we, we talk about it. In our uh, hospital, we created uh, this protocol uh, to be uh, taking care when you are uh, intubating critically ill COVID-19 patient. Uh, so summary of the important tips, appropriate crew resource management by the most experienced uh, team leader, Early rapid sequence intubation with video assisted laryngoscopy, better to be deep laid around. Uh, full uh, personal protective equipment pack should be available and uh, brought by a charge nurse. Airway equipment should be available all the time, including difficult airway sets. Staff protection takes priority all the time. Backup plans for failed intubation should be verbalized before entering the patient room. All through high flow nasal cannula, or at least nasal cannula during intubation should be used with caution in airborne negative pressure room. Uh, viral filter, high quality viral filter is important to be connected. Uh, aerosol intubation box is important. Avoidance of bag mask ventilation uh, is essential. And if you are going to use it, use it in a modified way as we learned it. Circuit disconnection should not be encouraged at all. NEPS nebulization should be not should not be encouraged at all. Again and again and again, your protection uh, carries top priority. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you in next uh, presentation uh, about nutrition in the same course. I hope you in, I hope you uh, you enjoyed the presentation and uh, it will be of value for all of you. Thank you. Uh, you can put your uh, questions on the um, uh, YouTube comment and I promise to answer you uh, in the near uh, uh, time. Thank you very much.